Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. I'm your host, Kim Thompson Pinder. And I just wanted to let you know that we're going to be taking a break from recording new episodes of the Author to Authority podcast for the next few months as I work on some uh, new projects and uh, things to build out the business. So I want to invite you to listen to this replay. I've gone back through uh, the best episodes of the last couple of years, and we will be repost, uh, po- reposting replays for the next few months. So sit back, listen, enjoy, and have fun with the Author to Authority podcast. Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And if you have ever wondered how you can turn your podcast into a six plus figure business, well, today's episode is for you. (laughs) I want to welcome Joanne Bolt to the show. She's a Southern mama with a snarky attitude. I already like that. (laughs) Who ran a $56 million real estate team before turning to her true passion, helping women build their businesses they dream of. She's host of the B Word podcast and founder of Podcast Her Network. Joanne builds community for women podcasters to get out of the messy middle and into action to achieve their unapologetically ambitious goals. But men, I guarantee you what she's talking about today will help you too. Welcome to the show, Joanne. Thanks, Kim. I appreciate it. Happy, happy, happy to be here. So Joanne, since this is your first time on the Author to Authority podcast, I would just love for you to take a few minutes and just share, you know, when did you make this humongous decision to turn from real estate into your own business? Because I know that that would be a huge transition. So I'd love to hear more about your story and, and how did you become the B Word podcast and the founder of the Podcast Her Network? You know, that's a great, great question. And one that my peers in the real estate community are still asking me is why (laughs) in the heck did you leave? And the thing for me is I, I got into real estate very young. I mean, I was 24 years old um, when I went into real estate and I just felt like I had done all I could do. You know, I had given everything I could to the industry and there comes a point in everyone's life and career. I mean, call it a midlife crisis if you want. I embrace that. It's okay. But at the point where I didn't want to take a phone call from a buyer or seller anymore, and I had a team of agents, and when they called me for help, I was really tempted to not answer it. And that's when I knew as a leader of a team, I couldn't have a team anymore if I didn't want to help my team members. And I didn't want to work with the buyers and sellers. I was handing everybody off. And finally, I looked at my husband and said, I just I've lost my passion and I don't know why, but I just lost the passion for the business. Mm -hmm. And so he looked at me and said, well, then, you know, take a buffet year and go figure out what you want to do. And I started playing around with coaching and consulting other real estate agents Mm -hmm. because I thought, well, you know, I've got a lot of experience in that world and I trained all the time at my brokerage. So let me take this out into the coaching world. And I kind of started the B word podcast a little bit flippantly as a joke. You know, like everyone has a podcast, kind of like everyone's a real estate agent in their second or third job. Everyone holds a license. And so it's kind of a joke for me. And what I found out was I loved it. Like Mm -hmm. I absolutely love being behind the microphone. I love putting together short little episodes that really impact people Mm -hmm. in their business. They give them a little aha moment of, oh, I could do that too. Or why can't I do that? Or, oh, here's how to do that. And I'm, what I figured out with me is I'm actually not a coach. I'm a consultant at heart. And there is a difference between the two. And for me, podcasting met that consultancy need. And so Mm -hmm. I kept doing that for a while in the real estate world and then sort of started leaning more into women entrepreneurs. And then the podcast started shifting a little bit and it's okay. If you want to own a podcast and you want to shift your topic, like your audience, it may take a little bit of maneuvering, but they'll come with you because you form relationships with them. 
Yes. And I started discovering that more and more questions I was getting from my audience were about podcasting, mm-hmm. but not how to start one, which is my pet peeve. Like, please don't ask me how to start a podcast. There's 603,000 YouTube episodes on that. Go look them up. They'll te- you know, there's really no one mic- microphone you have to have. There's really no one platform you have to have like, girl, you can figure this out. Okay. Yeah. What the next step for me in podcasting is and how do you make it make money for you? Yes. And where I love to dive in and this is where then I shifted in the B word podcast is not just, you know, everyone starts a podcast to monetize the podcast. And I'm like, uh, uh, Mm. it takes so long to get to the point where you can monetize the podcast. But if you are talking into a microphone, you're doing it for a reason. You're yes. supplementing a business you already own, most likely. So how do you make that podcast monetize your business? And yes. that's where I found my niche. And I've been here ever since. It's a really oh. long-winded story. But, you know, I mean, I'm 44. <laughs> I've had a few years. You and I are going to have fun today, Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So a couple of things that, that you said that let's just touch, go back and touch on. I don't think it was a midlife crisis. I think you were just ready for something new. I totally was. But some of yeah, my friends I, I called it a midlife crisis. I laughed and said, well, and again, snarky Southern mama, better me start a podcast than, you know, find a pool boy I liked instead of my husband. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think it's okay. Like, I started writing books in my 40s. Mm. And, you know. I didn't know at the time that that decision would totally change the trajectory. I've been talking a lot today. Trajectory Trajectory. of my life. (laughs) I I wrote books because I was in network marketing and I wanted to help other people in network marketing. That was why I wrote books. And, but not realizing how things would change. And then all of a sudden in, in 2015, very expensive year, son getting married, driving two cars by faith. I don't know if you've ever driven a car by faith. I but have it, not. Okay. This is where you make the decision. You don't want to go into debt anymore. So you don't buy new vehicles. Um, so you're buying older vehicles that you can afford, but eventually they get to the point where they're not fixable anymore, oh. but you still don't have quite enough money to buy the next vehicle. <laughs> so you're on faith that it's going to get you one more day. <laughs> it's like you get in the car God, please just let me get into town to do my shopping. Oh my God. And you get in the car. It's like, God, please just let me make it back home again. (laughs) I love it. And, uh, you know, a lot of the podcast listeners know the story. I went on a freelance site. I'm very creative writing music. I don't write music, but I'm a musician. Um, Very craftsy. But I am not artsy. Like, do not ask me to draw you anything and don't ask me to put colors together because you would not enjoy the result. So, you know, I'm on a a freelance site getting some design work done. God thought, why don't you check out writing jobs? I looked at the writing jobs. I couldn't believe what people were paying. And because I was already an established author, I had written books. They had good reviews. You know, I started getting jobs writing books, becoming ghost book ghostwriter. Within a year, because I had done everything for my own, all my own books, within a year, I started a publishing company. Like, I did not know back in 2011 that writing those books would totally change. But when I, when I started the publishing company, it was like all of a sudden everything in my life clicked. Yeah. It's what I had been looking for my entire life. Fantastic. When that happens, like that, it's like the magic got sprinkled in. You know, and I'm, I was in my 40s. I'm now in my 50s, right? Girl, I'm here for it. I'm so here for it. You know, so I think, you know, if whether male or female, if you're in that, you know, sort of midlife stage, I don't think it's a crisis. I think you're just being called to something bigger and better. And why fight it? Well, and I also look at it and say, there's, there's so many other options now than were available when I you know, was in my Mm -hmm. thirties or came out of college. And I mean, heck podcasting was not a thing back then. Had it been, maybe I would have gone into it, but you know, I mean, at that age, I didn't even have a cell phone. They weren't even cell phones. No, no. I can remember the first cell phone that you plugged in into the cigarette lighter in the car. Like it was in a bag, like a, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. (laughs) 
Oh, yeah. But I should have always known that this is something I would want to do because the minute that books became audible, you know, like I would listen to books and cars instead of music half the time. And so for mm -hmm. me, when I discovered the world of podcasts and it wasn't just NPR news, it was yes. people talking about their day or, you know, telling me true crime, love a good true crime podcast. <laughs> I was hooked. I became a junkie. And then when I discovered business podcasts and how you could teach, train and educate through them, I was like, mm -hmm. oh my God. And I feel like these podcasters, they're like my besties, you know, like we're going to go out and have a cocktail soon. <laughs> and that's when I was like, oh, this is no different than real estate. You're forming relationships, you're doing the thing, you're being an entrepreneur. And I was like, oh, this is just my next, my next gig. There you go. Just like you, you know, like you, you went from ghostwriting your own books to ghostwriting other people's. It was just that next evolution. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's, I don't think you, it's something that you should be afraid of. I, I think you need, you know, and God bless your husband, giving you a year off to explore. I was very fortunate. Not everyone gets that, but I was very fortunate. Yeah. I had yeah, done a I, really good job too. As I sort of realized I wanted to be in transitioning, mm -hmm. um, I always would take a good portion of the revenue from real estate mm -hmm. and put it aside because I never wanted to start a real estate year with my team, you know, with no with no yeah. money. Like we always had to have um, a PL ready for the next year anyway. And so I just started shifting some of that into the, when Joanne figures out her big girl life account. Um, and so <laughs> we had a little bit of a buffer because I had done that, but honestly, some of it occurred during COVID. So God kind of kicked us all in the pants and said, yeah, well, you know, you're going to have to stop selling homes anyway, to a degree, because some people will buy them virtually, but not a lot of people. And so that kind of forced my buffet year to really, really begin yeah. to take effect. Yeah, I I took a buffy a year, but it wasn't actually it was almost 20 years ago. Uh about six months after my dad died, mm -hmm. I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Um from 2001 to 2003, I had lost 10 very close people to me in my life. Gosh. And I had not stopped to grieve. And uh six months after my dad died, I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. And I managed to get laid off from my job. That was a blessing. And my husband and I talked about it and he knew I was not in a good place. And so I took a year off and I grieved. I grieved for a whole year. I just, I well, allowed your body myself. needed it. You needed it. Yeah. And it was probably one of the best things I ever did. Hmm. Now, financially, it wasn't too good, but right. You know, <laughs> but we, we didn't have reserves. But I needed to do that. And I'm, I'm so thankful to my husband, you know, for supporting me in that and giving me that time to grieve. Mm -hmm. Be thankful. I think sometimes we don't acknowledge as successful people, our partnerships, you know, and like the people yeah. that have supported us along the way mm -hmm. and that you can't get to where you are today. If you don't have that squad or tribe at home who gives you yeah. the permission to do those things, lets you breathe. Yeah. You know, it, it hasn't always been easy because my husband is not an entrepreneur at all. <laughs> and so having an entrepreneur as a wife has been um, an interesting journey for him. But he's come to accept that that is my calling. And so even though he doesn't always get it, um, and there were years that it was very rough and difficult because he really didn't get it. But now, you know, he is my biggest fan and my biggest supporter. He still doesn't always get it, but he loves me and he knows that this is what I'm called to do. My husband says that he likes the non-grumpy version of me. And so he's so <laughs> thrilled with me moving out of real estate because he was like, you were always grumpy in real estate. And I'm like, I mean, I just should have known, right? <laughs> oh. So we're going to shift gears here because I know you've come prepared to talk about how to create, you know, a six figure business from your podcast. So I want to give you lots of time uh, to share what you've prepared for the audience today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, because it is there are so many faucets to this discussion that we could take. But I thought what I would share with your audience today was really, if you're going to host or guest on a podcast, how to turn that experience into massive revenue. Yes. 
You know, because the big buzzword in, in digital marketing right now is, oh, you need to go guest on a thousand podcasts. And if you don't have a plan in place to do that, then you're really just sitting behind a Zoom camera for hours on end, slightly wasting your time. You know, you're throwing spaghetti on the walls and seeing what will happen and what will stick. And that's great if you've got that kind of time. I don't, you know. No. And so if you don't no. have a strategy behind it, you're wasting your time. So here is my strategy. You can all remember this with the word profit because mm, heck, like don't it. we all want to make a profit? Yes. And so, and I am a vi very visual person and I like to do a lot of, um, I put words to things so I can remember mm -hmm. them. It's how I got through school. I've done this <laughs> since I was like five, but the word profit is what I use every single time I go into an episode. And honestly, I do it whether I am hosting my own on the B word yes. podcast or guesting on someone else's. And so I'm going to use some of those examples a lot throughout, you know, this little um, experience for you guys today. But P in profit stands for purpose. Yes. I get it. It sounds obvious. Everyone just kind of mentally sat back and went, duh. But you'd be shocked at how many people will go on a podcast just to be on the podcast. They have no purpose and no plan wow. in place. So if you're going to do this, know what in the heck you're going to do it yeah. for. Are you a coach? Are you trying to sell a masterclass? Are you about to launch a book? Do you have a doggy daycare situation that you, you know, need people to help you bring in toys for? Like whatever it is, have yeah. a plan in place and have a purpose for every podcast that you go on. When you know the purpose, then everything else gets easier. Yeah. So now the R in profit is form a relationship. These relationships are so key critical to making any form of revenue off what you're doing. And there's two types yeah. of relationships you're going to form. One is with the other person. I mean, yes. I have formed so many relationships when we have not had um, the camera turned on and the record button pressed. In fact, I will give you this one story. I made $10,000 off of one podcast episode and it wasn't during the recording time. I was yeah. actually the host. It was on the B word. And one of my guests and I were talking back and forth. And we had such a great vibe that when we stopped recording, she looked at me over the camera and she was like, I'm hosting a conference in two months. Would you come in and be a keynote speaker? Yeah. I said, sure. What's the date? How do I get there? And so I went in, she paid me to speak. And from the stage, I picked up three or four more cult, you know, coaching consulting clients. Mm -hmm. I launched network. I did so many other things that when I sat back and looked, it didn't even happen on the piece of the, you know, the episode that would yeah. have ever aired, but I ultimately made $10,000. Why? Because I formed a relationship with my guest. Mm -hmm. And there are instances over and over and over again, I could give you where the collaboration that happens between the guest and the host ends up making way more revenue than an episode ever could by having a sponsored ad. So form those relationships. Mm -hmm. And the next piece is to respect that relationship. The, the second relationship we're going to talk about is between you and the audience. Yes. Be clear, guys. You're not on this podcast listening for me today. You're for mm -hmm. Kim, right? You have already formed a relationship as the audience member with the host. That's why you keep coming back time and time again. So when you respect that relationship and you treat it as such, you as the guest will inadvertently form a relationship with the host's audience as well. And that brings them into your world, which is you know, what you want to be doing. All right. Third O yep. profit is have an offer. You don't have to sales pitch every single person, but you yeah. should have an offer or something you're, you're giving away or a way to bring their audience in. And you should offer it in the middle of the episode. So you notice like we had a great intro, we talked, we chatted. Now I'm into what I'm talking about and I'm giving you the offer right now. If you want to go to joannebolt.com forward slash profit, you can download my entire outline of this. Mm -hmm. That's what you as a guest should do every single yeah. time. But go back to the purpose, the P and profit of what you're there to do. You know, yeah. if you're there to promote your book launch, then your offer shouldn't be a just go sign up for my newsletter. Or your offer shouldn't be a, let me give you six ways to go live on Instagram. No, relate it back to what you're there to talk about. So if yeah. you're going to promote a book, have a workshop, have a workbook, have a free 
excerpt that you can send them ahead of release date where they can get intrigued. What it just related yeah. back to what you're talking to, because if they're interested in the episode, they're more likely to go and take you up on your offer. Mm -hmm. if you have a product. Maybe it's a one-time discount with the host of the podcast name. It can be a thousand different things. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is again, drawing them into your world via your host of the podcast. So then we're going to go from PRO to F. Yep. And F is the follow-up. Again, yes. this one sounds obvious, but you'd be shocked at how many people skip this one because they just don't understand it and they don't want to take the time. If you're going to give an offer, which gets people into your email list or gets them into your world, have a way to follow up with them. Do yes. not do a download on your website and not have a follow-up email sequence. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be 12 months long. It can be two emails or one email, but follow up with them. Yes. If you're directing them to something on your Instagram, you know, you want them to DM you to get a 15 minute coaching call, strategy session, yeah. whatever it is, make sure that then you're going back in and you're following those DMs up and checking in with them. You've got a yeah. system in place that doesn't let them just drop off the wayside. Because otherwise, again, you've wasted your time in this entire thing. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. So then I, I love the word I, we can use it two different ways in the profit system. One is you want to intrigue them. Okay. So this is what I use if I'm a host. So the way that you intrigue them is you go through the entire episode with your guest. And then when you go offline as the, as the host, you figure out, oh, okay, what else would my, my audience really want to hear about? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, Kim, would I want to hear about what your daily schedule really looks like? Or how you actually book people onto that podcast? Or, you know, mm -hmm. what's your follow-up email sequence since Joanne just talked about it? And as the host, my intrigue would be an email out to my audience that says, oh, by the way, if you want her XYZ or a special discount, da, 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 then do this. You know, text this word, DM this, or maybe I add a bumper on to the end of my podcast that says that. Mm -hmm. Because now I've intrigued them. I'm like, oh, I got them interested in my audience. But as the host, how do I get the listeners into my list? Okay, well, I can add a bumper on to the end of the podcast and offer a little bit of extra information. Yeah. If you're the guest, your I is inform them. You want to teach them something. Yes. Podcast listeners come with curiosity. They do. They come to learn about mm. someone, about something, how to do something. It's like an audio Pinterest for them. And so <laughs> give them that information, teach them a little bit of something. So yeah. that's how you look at I from the guesting or the um, hosting standpoint. And then lastly, T, tell them what you want them to do. It's yes. A call to action for a reason. Please, as the host or the guest say, don't forget if you want your offer, go to. Or I am on Instagram. Hey, come DM me on Instagram. My handle is at it's Joanne Bolt. I am happy to have a further discussion with you. What I don't mm -hmm. want to see people do, and this is where you lose people on being able to make money off profit or podcasting is let me list every social platform you could possibly find me on. No. Yeah. Now, you and I both know yeah. we play on all the platforms, but where do we play the most? Where do we really want people to be? You know, do you want a review of your podcast on Apple or do you want it on Good Pods? Like, tell them what to do. People will listen and help you out, but you got to be specific and only give them one yeah. or two things. Please don't give them a lot. Yeah, and if exactly. you follow that profit outline, whether you're guesting or hosting almost every time, A, you'll grow your email list, you'll sell your products, you'll sell your launches, you will actually start to generate money for your business with a microphone. Wow. Wow. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. It's so simple and yet so hard. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, is that sometimes the offer and the follow-up is where I think people get bogged down the most because, you know, then you're getting into autoresponders, email systems, you have to have something, yep. you know, I have a very high ticket offer. I'm a full scale publisher. So uh, the last year or two, I've been putting things in place. And, and actually this summer, I finally found the right people to work with. I am putting together something completely different that I will now have something to offer because I really didn't with the high ticket. I just didn't really have 
those things. So I've been working on it and I found the right people to work with. So now hopefully September audience, um, there'll there be something go. new for you guys. And uh, I'm excited about it. But I think, you know, one of the areas that people can really focus in on is the R, the relationships. Absolutely. Because you know what? That doesn't cost any money. Nope. And um, one of the amazing things this last year when I got more consistent with the podcast, because I hadn't been over the last few years, and being on Podmatch is the quality of the people that I've been interviewing. Mm-hmm. And these people that I've been kind of praying about, like, God, I need I need to connect with these people. I have found them all through pod match and having them on the show and developing that relationship with them and then moving forward from there. And I think it's an amazing thing. You can build a business through relationships. A hundred percent. I mean, even when I sold real estate, we'd sell 56 million a year. We never cold called. We never door knocked. We didn't do any of those smeezy, smarmy, in my opinion, mm-hmm. ways of getting clients. We just formed relationships. Yeah. That's, it. That's all we ever did. Yeah. And and here's something else. And this was one of the reasons why I started a podcast, because one of my clients was very heavily into podcasting and he did podcast coaching. And so he helped me set up the Author to Authority podcast. But one of the discussions we had was, you know, monetization. And he's like, Kim, you know. You're, you'll be years before you can monetize your audience. Yeah. I'm like, okay, like that's not very, uh, why do I want to do this? But, you know, then he started having a discussion with me about the guests on the show and the relationships that you develop. And if yes. you design the show properly, um, your guests become potential clients for you. Every and, time. Yeah. And so that's what I did. So I have not made a single cent from the audience that I have on the show. Nope. But I have made money from the relationships I've developed with the guests on the show. Absolutely. And that's really, you know, we talked about that's where the magic kind of comes in. That's when when that mindset shift occurs of someone with a podcast that I don't have to have a million downloads per episode. You know, I don't have to be the biggest kid on the block. I just have to be strategic with what I'm doing and my former relationships with my, my, you know, my guest or other host, or, you know, if you have a big ticket offer, maybe every time your offer is a way to get them onto your email list. Why? Because when you release that big ticket offer and you're sending something out to your email list, guarantee you're going to sell it. So it's not that you're going to make something off every episode. It may be every six months, but you're teeing up, you know, you're turning up the waters to get it ready And those people have fallen in love with you over the sound waves or over watching it streamed live on LinkedIn. And when you're ready to sell something, they are like raising their hands. You know, they're like, oh my God, I already feel like you're my bestie. Now can we work (laughs) together? I mean, this is so amazing. That's to me so much better than social media because your social media friends, you know, you put something up on an Instagram story and I love me some IG or a post and it's there for like a hot second. But someone finds you through my podcast, if I, you know, you're a guest or me Mm -hmm. through yours, they're likely to go to my podcast and binge like eight or nine episodes. Yeah. We have really deepened that relationship. And so your podcast is just more evergreen marketing tool for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think something that, you know, people do need to realize is that, you know, podcasting is a long term marketing plan. Mm -hmm. It's not a short term, you know, get rich quick, become famous quickly thing at this. Yeah, you've it's got not going to go it. viral. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got to be in it for the long haul and, and be able to do what it takes to, you know, build that audience over time. If that's, if that is your main goal, but that's going to take a long time to do because you've got to build up enough audience to gain momentum so that they're out there promoting you. Absolutely. And that's when you hit momentum. But that doesn't happen when you've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 listeners. You know, that starts to happen when you've got thousands of listeners. Yeah. But even if you've got that podcast, it's got 100 or less per episode. You know, if Mm. you're just very intentional with what you're doing, you can make it super effective. My friend Brittany Kodak wrote a book called... um, 
oh my gosh, why am I like creating super fans? It's up on my shelf, on yes. my shelf, creating super fans. And she started a podcast to go along with her book. And she really struggled for a while. She was like, Joanne, I'm just spending so much time on the podcast and I don't think anyone's listening. And then I laughed and I was like, well, Brittany, what is your main goal here? You know, and she was like, I want to be on, I, I want to go, I want to teach my creating super th fans method. I want to be on stages. I want to be in the corporate offices. And I was like, so it's not selling the book. She was like, no. I said, great. How many stage opportunities have you booked? Probably because people heard about you. Maybe they read the book. Maybe someone recommended you, but oh my gosh, you're a keynote speaker. They went and listened to four episodes yeah. of that podcast to hear your tone and your tonality and the way you present yourself. Did you get booked off your podcast? And she was like, I never thought about it that way. And I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So she went back she came back to me a couple of weeks later and she's like, you know, I think I booked three or four off the podcast. I'm like, yeah, girl, it doesn't matter if you only have 20 people listening, if they're the right 20. <laughs> yeah. Cause it only takes the one right person to listen to it. Yep. And then it snowballs. Yeah. Love now, it. Love it. To be clear, I would love to be Jenna Kutcher and have a million people download every episode that I do. Sure. It would make my life probably a little bit easier, but well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One day. <laughs> but I think I think it's about being realistic. Yeah. In terms, you know, if, if you're considering starting a podcast, you know, count the cost ahead of time understand what the process is going to look like and figure out, you know, is this something that you can do? Because you can't just put up 10 episodes. No. Uh, you know, we're going to be celebrating now. Okay. I have to admit, okay. Haven't been consistent in the last few years and getting it out now, 2023, I have been consistent all of 2023 so far that that's been my goal for the years to be consistent. Congrats. So, but in the years gone by, I can't say that I've been consistent, but we're coming up to 400 episodes in August. So Girl, you're an OG. You're good. Actually, <laughs> listeners, this will have already have happened because this episode's going live in September. So you will okay. have already have heard the 400th <laughs> episode because we're recording it before August. Uh, I always got to think that one through, but coming up to it, it was like, I, I'm like, yeah, this is. You know, this is when, when you start hitting four or 500 episodes, you can really start to, to use that podcast more effectively. Well, and you've gotten into such a good rhythm by that point. You know, I hit a hundred episodes and realized the rhythm needed to be tweaked a little bit, but now the rhythm is a little bit better. And so you just get better and better at it. It becomes mm -hmm. more, you know, easier to be consistent. I would say it's, it's, yeah. it's a skill set. You know, it's something yeah. that you brush your teeth every day without thinking, oh, I have to go brush my teeth. You just automatically do it. So you're going to sit down and start recording because it's already ingrained in you now that that's something that you do for your business. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing too, is you get better over time. Like I oh, found- yeah. Please don't go and listen to my first episode. <laughs> oh, I know. So my <laughs> podcast mentor said, get the most famous person that you know to be on the podcast as your first guest episode. That happened to be Bob Berg. I had no clue what I was doing. I, I was, was nervous. Say, how did that work out? I was nervous as all get out. Thankfully, he is the consummate speaker. And he cared enough about me to carry the whole conversation. <laughs> My mentor said, get the most famous person you can or the person with the most biggest social media following because they'll hopefully share your episodes at around episode 30 or 40, because um, on episodes one through four, you suck. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I found, and, and I don't know whether you can speak to this, but I've hit, when I hit about episode 300 in around there, all of a sudden my guests are going, Kim, you're such an amazing interviewer. And I'm like, like, really? But I guess just over time, I've just been. It's a muscle you have exercised now. And, you know, it really is. It's like, if you're going to run a marathon, you don't go out and run the marathon the first day. If you've been sitting and eating potato chips on your couch, you start by walking and then maybe jogging and then maybe you walk jog and then maybe you add a little bit longer to that walk jog and then maybe you make it a little bit shorter time. Like you have to work up to doing a marathon. Yeah. Again, it's really no different in the podcasting industry, whether you're on YouTube or whether you stream live or whether you have the most amazing editor ever who can take out all the ums and ands and the 
pops, you know, like all that stuff. <laughs> you just, it's a skill set and it's a muscle that just gets easier and easier over time. Mm -hmm. And because now you've done so many interviews, you sort of know what to expect. And you do, you get to be an amazing host because of the experience. Yeah. Yeah. And you are, by the way. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Well, we are out of time, Joanne. So <laughs> what I would love for you to do is share one final thought. You already talked to the audience about how they connect with you, but if you can do that again and uh, share your freebie again, that would be awesome. Absolutely. So it doesn't really matter if you have a podcast, if no. you're going to guest on them to sell your product, your services or whatever, you need a system and strategy. So Joanne Bolt, that's my name, dot com forward slash profit. You can go and you can download a PDF. I explain the whole thing for you and I'm happy to have you in my world. Otherwise, if you are running a podcast, you know, my other biggest thing, I'm a community builder because it's kind of lonely behind the microphone. And so I have started a network called Podcast Her Network. It's for the girls. Sorry, guys. It's a girls only club. And every single month I'm bringing in big time people to teach you how to actually monetize how to actually run your business. And then I have a Q and a, you know, and there's portals full of videos, hours of stuff, all the information that I had to dig through and mm -hmm. figure out when I started my podcast, I am just going to lay it all out for you right there. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This has been Kim Thompson Pinder and Joanne Bolt on the author to authority podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you on the very next episode. Bye, Bye guys. now. <laughs>